January the 27th uh, here in the sanctuary at 6 p.m. We will have our annual church conference that is on Friday, January the 27th at 6 p.m. here in the sanctuary. We will have our church conference. We ask you to please be present as we present our goals for the year, our budget for the year, our ministries for the year, our officers and our leaders so that you can be a part of the decision-making process and be informed as to our plans for 2023. Amen? Amen. Also on this Wednesday, we will be having Bible study at 12 noon, Wednesday, 12 noon here at the sanctuary. Her Brown has agreed to teach for us. Let me tell you, the last time she talked, she brought that lesson alive. And I want you to come be a part of that as we fellowship, as we share together, as we learn the word of God. As I told Sunday school today, Sunday school Bible study is training. Amen? Amen. It's training. We have to be taught how to live for Jesus. We don't just get it through osmosis. You have to be taught how to live for Jesus. Those who are available, we ask you to come and share with us on Wednesday. Uh, we also ask you to pray for our youth as they get ready to go back to school for this final semester. There's so much turmoil in our public school system. Teachers quitting in the middle of the year. Uh, the shortages and staff in different places, but yet still our children have to be educated. Yeah. So play, pray for both the administrators, the faculty, the staff, as well as the students as they get ready to go back to school. Well, there is a word from the Lord on today. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. And uh, we're going to start with verse 12. Start with verse 12. Reverend Dunn read this particular passage in its entirety. I'm just going to lift up a couple of these verses here. Verse 12. That's Philippians chapter 3. Uh, verse 12. And this is the Apostle Paul writing to the church at Philippi. He says, Not as though I had already attained, neither were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press, church say press. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I want you to be seated in the presence of the Lord. I'm going to preach from the subject today. Keep pressing forward. Just look at your neighbor and tell them, keep pressing forward. Keep pressing forward. When New Year's often comes a desire to make some changes in our lives. Every year, millions of people make New Year's resolutions. We hope to make some positive transitions so that we can improve our lives the next 12 months over what we've had in the past. Newsweek magazine list listed the top 10 most common resolutions people make. Number one, exercise more. Number two, lose weight. Number three, get organized. Number four, learn a new skill or hobby. Five, live life to the fullest. Six, save more money. I think we all want that one right there. Save more money, but then part two of that is spend less money. Seven, quit smoking. Eight, spend more time with family and friends. Number nine is travel more. The last is read more. Now, I am not necessarily a proponent of making New Year's resolutions, but I do believe that every person ought to have some goals for themselves that they are preparing that you want to achieve for the coming year. Now, we shouldn't just make changes for the sake of change, but you need to have some things that you are working toward to improve your life over what it has been. But as we reflect on our lives and the areas that we want to work on, sometimes it's hard for us to understand that your goals need to align with God's will if you want them to be successful. 
successful. And sometimes it's hard to know what is God's will? What does God want for you? What does God want for your family? What does God want for your community? What does God want for your church? Sometimes it's hard to know what is God's will. The good news is Philippians chapter 3 gives us an idea of what God wants for us. It gives numerous examples of things we should do in order to please God and to live better lives. As we read our text, one thing that stands out to me most is we have to practice the spiritual discipline of gratitude. Church say gratitude. Church historians have stated that the letter to the Philippians was a letter of gratitude. I know we've got a lot of things we can complain about, and sometimes complaining is easier than actually working towards solutions to make things better. Everybody in here is shocked when you go to the grocery store, when you look at the cost of chicken and the cost of a, a carton of eggs. I saw the carton of eggs, I said, my God, I didn't want the farm, I just wanted some this morning. Things that used to be inexpensive now making you uh, make life decisions. Do I buy this food or do I buy this medicine? Do I get dinner tonight or do I save this money so I can pay the light bill? Times are tough for a lot of people right now. Inflation is real. They said the cost of food has gone up by over 30% in the last 12 months. And we're not even going to talk about how much gas costs and all the other stuff that now is everybody's raising their prices. Everywhere you go, you're getting sticker shot. And so we are having to deal with a new normal. And at the same time, we still haven't really got over the pandemic. No, 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 no. I know CNN don't talk about it every week. MSNBC and Fox News have moved on to new things. But I want you to know if you stop by the ER, it's still full, church. If you stop by any of these hospitals, the ICU is still above capacity. This thing is not over yet. We're still dealing with the ravages of it. It's hanging on. And that virus is out there. Not only COVID, but then you got to deal with all the other that come out every year as well. Now, all of this, God has kept you. Rising prices, health scare, national pandemic, housing crisis. I was looking online at, at rental properties just to see what people are paying right now in a two-bedroom, one bath off Riceboro Road was $1,500 a month. Salaries are remaining flat, but everything else is going up. People are facing a lot of stress. But you made it. You're still here this morning. God's still putting food on your table. Somehow, some way, you're still getting all the needs you have met. As we read this, we find that you got to learn, even in the midst of so many challenges, how to be grateful for what the Lord is providing. Our text shows that the Apostle Paul is motivated to continue serving and sacrifice and to share the gospel of Jesus Christ despite numerous obstacles to his ministry because he's grateful for the sacrifices others have made for him. Just want to stop right here and say nobody has become successful on their own. Everybody in here has needed somebody along the way to help you and to help myself in order to be where we are today. We should never be full of pride ego and then begin to think that we have done it on our own or pulled ourselves up by our own bootstrap. No, it was number one, God on your side and number two, God using people to help your life. That in itself is a reason to be grateful. We got to make gratitude a habit for ourselves. That is one New Year's resolution we should all make and strive to keep in 2023. God is going to be uh, requiring us to show more gratitude for what he is doing. If you want to change, you want to make a positive change in your life, let it start by having an attitude of gratitude. Yeah. 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 But we know it's hard sometimes. Sometimes people make it hard. 
they don't always come in the right spirit towards you. Even as we sit here in this beautiful sanctuary, sometimes folk don't have the best attitude even in God's house. Y'all quiet this Sunday morning. Some people thrive off complaining. They live to complain. They constantly are fault finding every little bitty thing they got to nitpick over it. And then some people just feel like they got to get everything off their chest. Some stuff you're supposed to take to the Lord. What you don't realize is that constant complaining is really you unloading on others, shifting your burdens to the shoulders of somebody else. Why don't y'all just shout, stop dumping on me? Oh, y'all said it like y'all didn't want it. Somebody say, stop.
into thinking that because they've been saved a long time, that means they've got maturity in Christ. But the truth is, all of us still have some work to do on ourselves. Look at your neighbor and say, I got some work to do. We've got some work to do on ourselves. No matter how long you've been walking with Jesus, no matter how long you've been a member of Thankful Baptist Church, no matter how
status? Because you got a new car, I'm still driving the same one. I'm not jealous. Because God blessed you to get a new relationship and, and you're still waiting on God to send you somebody. I'm not jealous. Because somebody got a new job, I'm still working on the job that I have. No, 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 no. I'm content in whatever situation I'm in. I learn the secret to be content. Here's the secret. Philippians 4 and 13. This is how Paul was able to be content. He said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. When you got God on your side,
love served who desire to be served today. Did we miss anyone? If you would raise your hand if we miss someone.
God, give us your Holy Spirit to guide us, to lead us, and teach us how to live according to your will and your way. Then bless us, Lord, that whatever the desires are within our hearts, you give it to us in this new year. Bless this church, Lord. God, we give it to you as a sacrificial offering. Bless it. Multiply it. That it may be pleasing in your sight. In Jesus' name, we all say amen. 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 Would you stand with me as we sing together, Bless Me the Time. convenient, safe, and secure way to give through your mobile device, try Giblify today. Just download that app, put it right there on your phone, and follow the instructions, and you can give anytime, anywhere to your historic Thankful Baptist Church. Be a blessing today, and we surely will appreciate it. Give through Giblify. Those of you who would like to mail your offering in, you can make your checks out to Thankful Baptist Church and send your offering to 302 Walker Street, Augusta, Georgia, 30901. Thank you so much for considering us in the ministry and being supportive during this very critical pandemic time. Your offering would be a blessing to help us continue to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ through our church membership and our community. Thank you in advance.